Here's what we want to do for at least the next hour. Mm. It's a, a concept that we were we had today, <laughs> which shows level of confidence yeah. that we can do it. Oh, we'll do it. For, we'll do it for the whole show. <laughs> I mean, we'll catch fire. <laughs> but it'll catch fire. An yeah. hour, I'll be happy with if we yeah. can do this for an hour. Andy and I were having uh, bacon and eggs and a sweet potato salad, uh, respectively, yeah. today. Just having a bit of a chat mm. and went, what if we did the whole show the yeah. same way that you have a conversation at the pub? Mm. Story monkey barring, yeah. essentially, is what it is. Here's how it's going to work. Ando, you're going to start us off. I've got a great story. You've, got, got, the f- <laughs> you've got the first story. I'm really happy, and I've been holding on to this story all day, because I said to you, I've got a great story. Whatever that story is, yeah. we'll pick three themes <laughs> that are in that story. I then have to monkey bar of one of those three themes yeah. to tell my story. Well, my story hopefully reminds you of another of story. A story. <laughs> yeah. That's why we've called this segment... That reminds me of a story. In fact, the show is called That, that Reminds, Reminds Me of a Story. story. Not that's a segment. That is all we're doing today. We're not having any guests on. We're no. not playing any funny songs. Yeah. We don't have any sketches. Yeah. There's no other phone topics. Yeah. It's so exciting, Andy. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about breaking all the rules yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. pick this theme <laughs> and run with it. What am I holding? You're holding a plate from the kitchen here yeah. that has the rules <laughs> written on it. In text. What am I going to do? Cover your eyes, Ham. Cover your eyes. He's going <laughs> to... He's broken the rules. Broken the rules. We're breaking the rules right now, everybody. <laughs> that has cut my hand. Actually, I've cut myself on some cheap porcelain. The, the lesson is who, the rules the, are the now broken. broken. So if you freak out and go, "That's not the way the radio should sound," consult the rules. Good luck, because they're in nine pieces. <laughs> get your arrow dot out. It's going to take you some time anyway to get put it together. The rules have been officially broken. Yeah, and just a small hazard on my side of the desk. There are shards of porcelain here. They're, getting, they're stuck in my hand. Hey, anyway. Yeah, what's your story? Well, first of all... Story, story number one. one. This right. is the first story, okay? This is hopefully going to kick off the next two hours of just amazing stories. Just great story I, monkey barring. I feel like we're just scratching the surface of my story, even though it's a good one. The thing is, let's all remember this story and see at the end of the show where we ended up. Here's my story. A yep. friend of mine went round to his grand's house. Mm-hmm. Uh, and five years ago, the, he gave her a DVD player. Very generous. Right. And uh, she's been loving it. Good. You know, gram, some grands go, no, nah, I don't want technology. Some of them go, yeah, yeah, great. That's yeah. A, it's a mug holder. She was such a fan of movies. She yeah. went, well, this is great. This is really going to enhance my movie experience. So he's gone around there. This is five years ago he gave the DVD player. DVD player. Last Wednesday, he went around there, so a week ago, and she just finishing up, finished up watching Braveheart. Right. Excellent. Yeah, good choice. Of Saucy film. themes. She's old enough. She understands <laughs> it. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, it was the credits were just about so isn't it he, funny that you think that there are some films that you think are too adult for old people? <laughs> <laughs> of course they know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so she got to – he watched the last five minutes with her or so and the credits rolled yeah. and he was like, oh, well, it's great to see that Grant's still getting a lot of work yeah. out of this. And then she went, well, I've got to get it back to the, uh, the DVD store. She pressed rewind on her DVD, <laughs> and it started scrolling back. Oh, so she's and rewinding it, the DVD. He's, he's like, what are you doing, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> she, he, she said, I'm just rewinding it before I take it back. Don't want to send back <laughs> an unrewound DVD. And scrolling back. He goes, you don't need to do that. She goes, yeah, they get upset with you. <laughs> <laughs> upset with you if you don't take it back. <laughs> and he goes, but that's the new... This is, I'm sure I should have told you this about so DVDs. You don't like need to do rewinding that. Rewinding a record, <laughs> man. <laughs> you don't need to do that. And she said, Really? And he just thought, for five years... She's been rewinding she's back. Been watch- he watches one film a day <laughs> I love it. and I'll- sits and watches it rewind uh- once a day for five years. Because you can't rewind it with... You know how on VCRs you could stop and rewind? Yeah. She must have been so annoyed going, oh, you can't even stop and rewind. No. You, have to, <laughs> you have to rewind it the slow rewind way. than VCR. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great story. Thank you. Now that's kicked us off for That Reminds Me of a Story. <laughs> Here's the next bit. So I'll pick. We pick three themes. Well, old people and technology would be old people and technology. Um, video, video stores, <laughs> video, video stores. stores, and Braveheart. Okay, there's the three <laughs> themes. There's the three do, themes. Do you, does that remind you of a story, Ham? Okay, so what have we got? Old people and technology, <laughs> video stores, Braveheart. Yes. Well, I worked at a video store, <laughs> so I would like to pick video stores. Do you have a good story, though. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For, that reminds me of a story. Are you gonna Are you gonna tell your story now? Yeah. Story number two. All right, now listen out to this story, everyone, because from this story, we'll pick three themes, and then it's over to you guys yeah, on exactly. 131060 for the rest of the show. Mm-hmm. 
I used to work at a video store, Ando, mm-hmm. and it was my job to rewind a lot of them back when they were VHSs. Yeah, yeah. I had to rewind a lot of them uh, when they got sent in. Yeah. Even though technically I worked with an inferior or a subordinate, <laughs> I was 17, yeah. he was 14, yeah. but because he was the boss's son, he didn't have to do anything. <laughs> so while I was rewinding movies, he was always, as chance would have it, cleaning yeah. video covers, because yeah. we had to do a lot of cleaning back in the... We didn't get a lot of customers, so they were quite dusty. <laughs> Always in the adult section, <laughs> looking at the back of the adult movies where there was just a cheeky shot of a boob here or there. Well, I did. Permanently that. there. Well, that's what you did as a kid. You would go, that was. And that was he's just... on the clock. He's on the. <laughs> and I'm the one, I'm the one just rewinding all the videos while Angus sits around the corner <laughs> working up a sweat looking at the adult films. Good story. Not a bad one. Well, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that was just okay. one of my uh, less fond memories of the video store. Well, hopefully that's about to remind people of a story what on thirteen ten sixty. What themes do we have? Well, sneaking a look yeah. at, at at adult yeah. <laughs> the adult themed teenagers uh, copying a look at adult photos. Uh, yep, that's uh, one theme. Yeah, that's a great theme. Uh, working with the boss's son. Great theme. That's what, another theme. What, uh, what, what outfit did you wear back in the day? The uniform was an embroidered chambray shirt. <laughs> Didn't have my name on it, but it had the video logo, video store logo on it. Chambray shirts. Do you want that to be a theme? <laughs> Can chambray shirts be a theme? I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. You know, like a, a light <laughs> denim? <laughs> chambray shirts. So we've got sneaking a look at adult pictures when you're a teenager. Has that reminded you of a story that you're trying to do does, that? Does that remind you of a story, anyone? Yeah. Uh Chambray shirts yeah. <laughs> and working with the boss's son. 13, 10, 60. Any good stories there? <laughs> Give us a call in. Does it remind you of a story? Hi, Mish and Andy. That reminds me of a story. Andy, driving you home, and we're excited because we are doing That Reminds Me of a Story. We've thrown the rest of the show out the window. Yeah. The, the rules have been shattered. If you're looking for the rules, <laughs> I'll save you the embarrassment. They're not here anymore. They've been broken. <laughs> hey, the idea of today is I started with a story. Yep. And, and similar to at the pub, yep. um, in, you just listen to someone's story, and whatever it reminds you of, someone tells another story. We're up to story number three. Yes. <clears throat> now, from my story number two, the three possible themes uh, presented in that were working with the boss's son, mm. Sneaking a peek at adult pictures yep. when you're a teenager and chambray shirts. Brooke on 131060. Brooke. What theme what? have you gone Hang for? Hang on. Oh. This is exciting because she, yeah, Brooke, welcome to the show. Welcome to That Reminds Me of a Story. Thank you. And Brooke, she's about to give us uh, story number three, isn't she? Yeah, sneaking a peek. Oh, she's gone she's with gone sneaking with a peek. <laughs> story <laughs> number three. Brooke. Brooke, we're all ears. Take okay. it away. So when we were kids, there was my brother and I and two other male friends. Yep. We used to go around to the male friend's house, put on some adult films, um, and then stand outside at the lounge room window watching it. <laughs> hang on, hang on. Why are you outside the lounge room window watching it? So that if um, the mum, and, or that was usually the mum, if the mum came in the room, we could quickly run away and she would wonder why this porno was playing. <laughs> <laughs> but Brooke, you miss out on all the excellent dialogue. <laughs> I can still remember vividly the last one that we watched. Well, is it um is it safe for a family show? Um, women were involved. Oh well, Brooke, you, <laughs> you don't have to go into it. Don't, that's fine. We understand what happens in those type of films. But Brooke, you, I mean, have you got you're so far no shocks that women were involved. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me, Brooke, how many times can you get away with this before um the your friend's mum? comes in and goes, why is there always, you know, adult films playing in the middle of the day on VCR with no one in the room? I have no idea, but we never got busted. Really? Yeah, and we were like only eight or nine. Yeah, it's a bit confusing. I went through the same kind of thing. Yeah. There, there was just general confusing watching the things, but I knew it was naughty. I had no idea what was happening. But I knew it was naughty, yeah. and that was the excitement yeah, for sure. Exactly. It always it gave me a false sense. I think I saw my first adult film when I was about sixteen. It gave me a very false sense of how easy it might be to pick up women. <laughs> <laughs> it just involved a guy going up to girl that was roller skating, and then um, then they were in love very quickly. And uh, what themes have we got? I would say pulling the wool over your parents. Yes. Eyes. What about this? Hmm? Quick escapes. 
Quick, quicker, yeah. See, they've set up for a quick escape. Yeah. Have you? What have you set up for a quick escape? Quick yeah. escapes has to be in there because I mean they, they just come in, boom, you're gone. Mm. No one's any the wiser. And what pulling the wool over your parents' eyes? How long did you get away with doing something yeah. your parents didn't know? Uncaught. About? Ideally, were you uncaught? Yeah. We, did you go uncaught? Did you un- go on? Un- All right. There are two themes. Yeah. Did you go uncaught From pulling the-, the wool over your parents' eyes? Yep. Or quick escapes. Bert, how you going? Very well, lads. I hope you're all today too. Well, we're excited, Bert, because the rules have been thrown firmly out the window and smashed on a desk, so <laughs> there's no way the rules can apply to this show. Are you enjoying that? Reminds me of a story, Bert. Are you caught up in the excitement? I, I am, and speaking of smashing, that's where my story starts. Oh, we, well, which, 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 are you, which theme, theme are you going? Are you going oh, sorry, yes, it was uh, pulling the wool over the parents' eyes. Well, and... well, before you go into it, Bert. Story number four. Story number four. Go for it, Bert. Here we go. We had toy library at school, and I one night borrowed indoor lawn bowls, which uh, when I got home and mum and dad were out, me and my brother were playing, it got fairly, you know, lively, the game of indoor lawn bowls, to the point where one went through a window. Yep. (laughs) We panicked. Mum wasn't home yet, but I'd read enough books by that stage to know that you had to get the glass from outside the window and put it inside if you wanted to make your parents think that it was going to be a rock coming through the window the other way. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah good. very good. So I did that, and I worded my brother up so that he'd stay staunch. <laughs> now, unbeknownst to me, Mum and Dad were a bit smarter than I thought, and they obviously looked at the rock that I'd also brought in from outside and put inside and thought, how the hell did that get there? Because it would have been like JFK's magic bullet. It had to come <laughs> over the fence, through a banister, under a chair, and still have enough force to smash the window. <laughs> so they called the police anyway. Uh, so things were starting to get a bit frightening for a uh, you know, nine-year-old. But um, we stayed staunch. The police took the reports, walked away, and uh, hopefully mum and dad don't listen to this show and I still remain undetected. Oh, oh Bert, well Outstanding work. <laughs> well. I mean, that so is... many, so many <laughs> themes from from story number four, Ando, to monkey bar into our next story. So many good ones. I've got a couple of ideas. What do you want to think? I think we have to go. Did you try to fake a crime scene? <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. Did you fight? Did you try and fake a crime scene? And then something completely different, Ham. Any story lawn bowls related? Just give us a lawn bowl story. I would love a lawn bowl story. Lawn bowl story. scandal, lawn bowls mischief. <laughs> yes. Did you did you win bronze at the Commonwealth Games in lawn bowls? Thank have, you very much. Have more Bert. than that. <laughs> hey, Mission and Andy. That reminds me of a story. That is what we're doing for the whole show, Ando. Yeah. We've we're had up to story number five. Yeah, up to story number five. Uh, the rule book has been uh, thrown out. Yep. Yeah. Shredded. Shredded. We're not, we're not just taking calls on one thing, yeah. taking calls on anything under the sun. Here's how it works. Anytime someone tells us a story, we pick the two major themes <laughs> from that story. We then will accept any stories relating to those two major themes. The previous story we had, the two themes we picked were, have you faked a crime scene? Yes. And anything to do with lawn bowls <laughs> are our categories we are now accepting calls on. Absolutely. That was after Bert's story. Rod joins us on 131060. How are you, Rod? Mate, I'm great. How are you doing? Very, Very good, good, Rod. Are you caught up in the excitement of that reminds me of a story? <laughs> oh, mate. Well, that and lawn bowls, how can I contain myself? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. It's a great category. So, I, I, we could do a whole show just on lawn bowl stories. So you've, you've elected for lawn bowls over the, the theme do you fa- did you fake a crime scene after Bert's story? We're trying to I'm trying to keep that quiet the crime scene one <laughs> <laughs> okay. we, did, we did understand there'd be legal ramifications with R- that well Rod before you, before you jump into it story number five you are the fifth in our chain of stories take it away Rod it's not much of a story. I'm only going to chew up a couple of minutes. Sorry, fellas. But, <laughs> That's uh, fine. We'll accept it, Rod. A little town down in the snowy mountains called Jindabyne. And, mate, they're all a really close crew. They all know each other from primary school, and they're all bloody 80. <laughs> I used to play lawn bowls against this guy, McGuffick, and, mate, he, his belt wasn't... It was too big, and his bum crack was always showing. <laughs> so we used to get Kino pencils, like javelins, and yeah. see how far away we could get them down there. <laughs> well, well, one day, his nephew flicked a match down there, and he thought it was a pencil. And it wasn't, and, well, it burnt a fair bit. And... <laughs> really? So this guy knew you were playing the game? Oh, he loved it, mate. <laughs> he loved it. So, he, he, so he, what was the record? I mean, did anyone get a About measurement? four metres. Four, four metres? <laughs> someone, know, got, awesome. someone got a pencil in from four metres away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it took a bit of practice. We used to chuck them like javelins, but the four metre one was more like a throwing knife. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah Stephen Seagal would have been impressed. <laughs> yeah. Rod, terrific story. Great story, Thank Rod. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. The two themes, Ham, for yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, what are you thinking around? We've got, I mean, the match going in the crack. 
Uh, do we have? I think games you've invented to pass. Games the time. you've invented, terrific. Ga- yeah, games you've invented to pass. I mean, do we the time. focus on 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 too much bum crack? Is too much bum crack a theme in a uh, bum crack showing its head where it shouldn't? Yeah. Or do we move away from that? No, and we, we focus do not. On- <laughs> <laughs> we certainly games you've invented do. too much crack. <laughs> yes. Does that remind you of a story, everybody? I don't know. Thirteen ten sixty, if it does. <laughs> now, technically, with the, on the sixth story, we should have ended up at Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that hasn't happened. We are now at bum cracks. Well, the two options yeah. were too much bum crack or games, games you've invented. invented. Yeah, Emma on 131060 joins us. Games you've invented or too much bum crack today? Hi, guys. Um, well, it's too much bum crack. Okay. <laughs> it does sound like a perverted uh, version of Jeopardy here, doesn't it? I'll take too much bum crack for $500. Thank you. <laughs> All right, Emma. I think your story number six. Story number six. Take it away. Okay, well, my fiancé, as long as I've known him, he always made over and he's always got his ass crack out. Oh, he used to be good friends with Hamish. <laughs> yeah. I, I must have seen him at meetings. <laughs> Carry on. And um, one night we were getting tattoos done at a friend's house and um, he got a bit drunk and decided that he would tattoo a smiley face just above his ass crack. Oh, So wow. when he... When he bends over, he's always smiling. <laughs> <laughs> so are we talking, I mean, does, does the, the crack itself continue the tattoo? Or? No, it's just above it, but it's because they were drunk, it's kind of off-centred and not so round and perfect. It's mm. all squealy. It looks like a five-year-old draw it. And Emma, how, as, as, your, as his wife, how, yep. does, how does this make you feel? Um, he thinks it's a joke. I look at it and just cringe because it's it's awful. <laughs> Sure, sure. Well, there's a couple of themes here, um, Ham, to keep us I, going. I'm going to pick, and um, for people that are just new to that reminds me of a story. Yeah. Uh, we've been doing it since the start of the show. The idea is to pick two themes from yeah. every story. We think two is a good amount of themes. How about this, Ando? Mm. I think, do you absolutely hate your partner's tattoo? <laughs> yes, it's a Have great they one. ruined their body in your eyes? Yep, yep. And then would we go, since they're getting tattoos at their friend's house, mm. would we go irregular activities at your friend's house? Did you do something a bit irregular? Did you do something, or... or I mean, that's not the normal... I mean, you've never got a tat at my house. (laughs) No, I haven't. And I'd happily do one. Yeah, well, I'll consider... Because I've got ink, and I keep telling you, you've got to get some, mate, because it is an exciting life. We can absolutely do that, Ham. But uh, I was also thinking, not just tattoos, maybe another theme is, has your partner done something to completely put you off him? Yeah. Has your partner done something to completely put you off and might be buying the wrong car, haircuts, fashion, wrong job, anything? That's why I'm a big, I'm a big believer in if you're single, get, get fat, get, like, get a beard, yeah. go just get as bad as you can. Because yeah. if you find someone in that state, yeah. you're home free. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 13, 10, what about that, Ham? Yep. Has your partner done something to absolutely put you off them? Good. And then would we go irregular activities, activities at your friend's house? <laughs> Both of those. What are your the friends th- getting up to? <laughs> They're the two themes, everybody. This is Hamish and Andy. That reminds me of a story. Hamish oh. and Andy driving you home and home today. We are playing, uh, I suppose, sort of game, yep. which it involves people. Finding a theme from the previous story and just monkey bar it like it would be at a pub. Yeah, I, I started with a story about a gram that rewinds DVDs. That has led us through six different stories, all high quality stories. Yeah, I think, and all could have stood alone as a as a cheap audio book, but you could sell them. <laughs> yeah. You could sell these stories. We are now at a point where we've got two themes from our last story. Yeah. The two themes were, what, what has your, your partner, partner done? Yeah, to put you off. Or what does your partner do that absolutely puts you off? The other theme being odd activities at your friend's house. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> We're the two themes. are up to Jody. What, uh, what theme have you chosen to go with, Jody? Um, what my partner does to put me right off. Yeah, Radio. And enough. I hope do, he's listening to this. Okay. Well, do, do you want to say his full name, Jody? Tony King. <laughs> Tony King. Attention, Tony, Tony King. Attention, Tony King. Let's find out what story well, number... Before you jump in, Jody, uh, let's find out what story number we're up to. Story number seven. seven. Take it away, Jody. Well, this is very strange, and I hope you're listening, Tony. He, um, ever since he was a child, he's been collecting his baby teeth in a, vi- a plastic vial. Hmm. And... Um, <laughs> 
And I keep finding them around the house and confronting him about it. And then they just move spots. He promises to get rid of them, but he just can't part with them. Hang on. What do you mean you keep finding them in the house? That implies that he takes them out and has a play with them. I, I think he must play jacks or something. Because he's not. It's not like it's just like, oh, mate, that's still in the wardrobe. Can you get rid of those? Yeah. If you keep he finding them, it, it means <laughs> he's hearing your car come into the driveway and trying to scoop yeah, them up as fast as he can and put them back and, where they belong. He's and ready. another thing, um, my daughter, my... One of my daughters smashed a rock on my other one's finger and her nail went black and uh, it's just fallen off and my husband put it in the jar for the nail fairy. There's no such thing, Tony King. (laughs) Tony. (laughs) This is tooth fairy real, nail fairy weird. I'm I'm scared that I'm going to find his foreskin pickled in a jar somewhere. (laughs) We all are, Jody. We all are. (laughs) All right, Jody. Here are my two themes from this to kick us, keep us going. On does that remind you of a story? Have you kept? A bodily item. Have you get the body part? Yeah, that's that is an interesting one. Like like Tony has. Can I throw this out as a as yep. a theme that might you know we could this could open us wide open for the next uh, story. Weird Tonys. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know a weird Tony? <laughs> <laughs> so those, those are the two themes. <laughs> Have you kept a body part? Do you know a weird Tony? <laughs> what makes him weird? Does that remind you of a story? <laughs> Terry's about to join us. Hey, Terry, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. The two, the two themes are, have you kept a bodily part or weird? Do you know a weird Tony? <laughs> what theme have, your go, have you gone for, Terry? Mate, I know a weird Tony. Oh, <laughs> well, before, you, before Tony. you jump into it... Story number eight. Terry, take it away. What's your weird Tony do? Uh, weird Tony, he stands about six and a half foot tall and he weighs about 70 kilos, so just to look at him is, is weird enough. He's a thin Tony. He's a very thin yeah. Tony. Well, that is extraordinary. Six and a half feet he, and, and 70 kilos. Cackling Jack, turn your microphone on. How, how much that describes you... me pretty, pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much do you weigh, Cackling Like Jack? about 70, 75 kilos. And, and how tall are you? Uh, I don't know, maybe a bit shorter than that, 6'3 or 6'4. Yeah, but you're a bean pole, so we kind yeah. of can get a good idea. <laughs> so he's worse than Jack, so he's <laughs> very thin. And what else, Terry, that makes your Tony weird? He walks around and after every sentence, he finishes it with no worries. It wouldn't matter what it was. He he could quite literally kill someone and he'd walk away and go, no worries. <laughs> it's so strange. So does he say it, even if it's out of context, does he say no worries? Yeah, to finish anything off. He can just get, he can get in trouble with something at work and he'll finish the sentence, but no worries. That is bizarre. I find tall people, like that kind of tall, yeah. beanpole tall, a little untrustworthy, but I don't know why. Really? Yeah. Yeah, like I just find that 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 body make and shape. You find a, a you find them a bit shifty. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Is that one of the things? <laughs> it could be. What type of person <laughs> do you find a bit untrustworthy? Yeah. What? Yeah. What? What type looking person? Yeah. Do you find a bit untrustworthy? And I know that's horrific. You should never judge a book by its cover. Mm, but well, I you just, can't help it, can you? Yeah, You're tallest. Help, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what about this? Is another theme? Verbal crutches. Or yeah. verbal tics. People that we had a teacher at our high school that would say for it what? all the time for no reason. Would literally finish the sentence by going, anyway, so, uh, you know, lunch is at one. For it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like she had a parrot stuck in her mouth. The only knew one phrase would always just jump out at the end. Hey, Mr. Andy. That reminds me of a story. Amy Shenani driving you home and home. Today, that reminds me of a story. How many stories can we monkey bar on to? The last story was about a weird Tony. That was one of the themes from a previous story. From that, we went with, what kind of looking person do you not trust? Mm. We know it's wrong to judge a book by its cover, but, but you know, <laughs> men with beards, do they put you off? Why? Can we explore that? Or verbal crutches. Do you say something at the end of a sentence for or whatever? S- for, so- for some reason, Terry, who called in, he, his uh, weird Tony did it. His weird Tony said, "No worries." <laughs> no matter anything, what the situation, no matter was. what the situation, his weird Tony said, "No worries," which was quite interesting. Joining us now is Ellie, I believe, on thirteen ten sixty. Ellie, what topic have you gone for? 
Uh, someone with a moustache who, um, sorry, a ponytail I didn't trust. Okay. Oh, hold, 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 on, hold on one second. So you've gone for so what sort of looking people don't you trust? Uh, Cackling yeah. Jack, what story are we up to? Story, story number nine. nine. Story nine. number nine. The ninth story in That Reminds Me of a Story. Take <laughs> it away, Ellie. Uh, well, I had a massage uh, yep. last year after a fun run. Yeah. And the guy who massaged my legs, um, had a uh, had a ponytail, mm-hmm. and um, from the moment I saw him, I thought, uh, yes, he he's a bit of a creepy guy. <laughs> is this and... a, is this a, the- a theme we should be saying to guys? Ponytails. Yes. I mean, were ponytails ever in? I don't think they ever were in. Very long briefly, in, in. in the seventeen hundreds, <laughs> <laughs> ponytails were in for a moment. <laughs> When they're dyed hair, they've got dyed hair. Yeah, if you've got dyed hair and a ponytail. And so, Ellie, would you sooner have not been massaged? Uh, yes. Well, my father was quite concerned, I've got to say. When you, when, when you got issued this guy to massage you? Yes. Um, he got the camera out. Yeah. And, boy, the picture we've got of him, he looks so sus. <laughs> but, um, convicted did he pedophile did, alert. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Did he do anything <laughs> wrong or does he just look sus? No, he did not do anything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he, but that, this, is, this is the thing. For bad news for this bloke, because he's yeah. giving out the wrong vibes, he's giving out the wrong yeah. message. He's a, he's a great he, masseuse. He is. He's a great he's a masseuse. He's a great masseuse, and I'm not bagging his masseuse qualities. But unfortunately, he came across as extremely <laughs> creepy to the <laughs> point where your dad took evidence photos. <laughs> well, yes. I like it, Ellie. Let's yes. uh, the two themes, Ham. First of all, fun runs. Fun runs. They're, they're, they're not fun. <laughs> what was your least fun fun run? Good. How's not, that? No fun runs. <laughs> a non-fun run. Good. Have, have you been involved, 13, 10, 60, have you been involved in a non-fun run? What about this as well? Okay. Does your Dan take pictures of things for evidence? <laughs> <laughs> Craig joins us on 13, 10, 60. Welcome, Craig. Thanks, boys. How are you? Very well, good, very Craig. Excited. Let's just get a, a story ch- uh, number check if we could. Story number, number 10. 10. Wow. De- Deco story. Deco. Desi story. <laughs> well, the two themes you had to pick from from the previous story uh, that Ellie told were non-fun runs yeah. and does your dad take pictures for evidence. <laughs> what have you gone with, Craig? Mate, gone with a non-fun run. Okay, okay take it away for story number 10. <clears throat> mate, uh, I was living in Dubai a few years back and um, mate and I decided we'd go in the 10K fun run on the day of the Dubai Marathon. Good fun. <laughs> So we pre- prepared thoroughly, um, got full of red wine and beer the night before, <laughs> yeah, okay. and uh, it's, it's a six it's a six o'clock start. So we drink through till about three, yeah. and um, built, we knew, knew we had to prepare well. So we have guzzled loads and loads of water, knowing there's no drink stops on the ten k's. Failed to realise there's no toilet stops either. <laughs> so um, what we've actually done, and in, in, in the sort of the coolness of the morning, we decided we'd put our safari suits on and run in, in our safari suits, one in a, a leopard skin, and, and me in the, the Frisian cow. Just another couple of Aussies overseas representing the country, doing it, <laughs> doing it proud for the expats. <laughs> so you run, did so you far, run as a cow, Craig? I ran as the cow, yeah. yeah. So yeah, far, so. no good decision. <laughs> no, no. And we're, we're talking velour material with, with some you know, satin lapels, yeah, okay. short sleeves. <laughs> yeah. So now, yeah, so we had to basically relieve ourselves along the 10Ks. Uh, you know, the fact there's no toilets or stops along the way, well, yeah, and um, yeah. got to the end of the ten. Sorry, days. sorry, Craig. So you you didn't you couldn't just run over to the side and have a cheeky wee. No, so there's very strict laws about that in Dubai. Well, well, there's there's men with machine guns. Yeah, so, you can't um, do that. So you just wet yourself as a cow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. I, just, I just wet the cow basically. Yeah, the old leaky and, other. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah, so anyway, all good, all, you know, finished sub one hour, and um, about a month later, my mate ran off with, the, with my wife. Oh, that's what? no fun. <laughs> that is no fun at all. That's no, it was, t- yeah, it, was, it, was, it wasn't much fun for the cow either. <laughs> Look, here's the cow standing there. I mean, by that stage, you're obviously out of the cow suit, but I mean, the space of a month, you've yeah. wet yourself as a cow, <laughs> and <laughs> you've had your best mate nick your wife. Well, yeah. third, okay, the, the, here's the themes that I, or here's one that's really yelling at me here. Go for it. Worst mate ever. Terrible mate. 13, Terrible mate. 10, 60. What's the worst mate you've ever had? What have they done? Yep. Here's, here's my one. Yeah. Uh, what's happened to you dressed as a cow? <laughs> no, that's too specific. <laughs> Could be great. What Could we they- get a great story out of that? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think we can go with that. 
I, I challenge, please, everyone, come to my rescue. Show Andy that there are some great stories out there. What's happened to you dressed as a cow? Okay, two things. Worst mate ever. Yep. It's the, it's the worst friend. And what's happened to you dressed as a cow? The two themes. Horrible. Unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> Any bovine. Any bovine. I'll take <laughs> what's happened to you dressed as a cow? As we go in to story number 11 <laughs> in That Reminds Me of a Story. Hi, Mish and Andy. Today we are doing That Reminds Me of a Story. We have started with myself saying a story, Ham. Yeah, at four o'clock. An hour and a half ago. And just from there, pity backing stories, just picking small themes as we go along for every story, and then completely different tales are being told as we go along. We're up to Ruth. Yep. And Haim, this is pretty exciting because the two themes were worst mate ever or the controversial what's happened to you dressed as a cow or a bull. Andy, you didn't think we'd get any phone calls for that, Ruth. What is your story about? Hey, boys. Love you, Sue. Yeah. Love you back, Ruth, if you say the word cow. <laughs> Definitely the cow. Oh! <laughs> I knew we'd get a cow story. Oh, this is disappointing. <laughs> I knew All something right. would have happened to someone dressed as a cow. <laughs> well, All right. Let's get, let's get a story check from Cackling Jack over there pressing the buttons for us. Story number 11. 11. Ruth, is good. All yours. Okay. Well, I was... Um, the starring role in this song um, in the production of Jack and the Beanstall back in school days. Mm-hmm. And most of the nights I was the back of the cow, but one night one of the girls was off sick, so I was promoted to be the front of the cow. Oh, yep. yes. And um, it was all very exciting. It was in the big song about Mozart the cow. And um, <laughs> <laughs> got a bit bored and couldn't see very well the front of the cow, so started moving, sort of make it look a bit more interesting, started moving forward and ended up in the orchestra pit. Oh! Did now did both of you go, or did this, the front fall out of the cow? Oh, it was messy. It was both of us. Both, both <laughs> so okay. the whole of Mozart <laughs> fell into the orchestra, which has a certain sort of poetic license to it because Mozart did enjoy music. I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, hey, I mean, that's a terrific story, Ruth. That's and, a great story, oh. and that that happened to you dressed as a cow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what are your themes here? Well, I do love the pun-based name of Mozart the Cow. Mm-hmm, mm. I, and I'd be happy to, as a theme, go primary school pun-based productions. <laughs> <laughs> or, yeah, okay, kind of primary school productions. Yeah. What's the, what's was the, what was the name of your primary school play? Mm. But, I mean, we're specifically looking for things that had terrific plays on words in them. Mm, mm, okay, and what brought your gig to a standstill? If you're a musician... Yeah, showstoppers. Showstoppers. I mean, a cow falling in an orchestra pit <laughs> is a good one. As, a, as, as an orchestral player, yeah. you're, not, you're expecting the conductor to stop. You're not expecting a cow to make you stop. You shouldn't have to wear a helmet in <laughs> case <laughs> Mozart falls on you. <laughs> as any type of musician... Okay, so these are our two themes. Well, as any type of musician, what's brought your gig to a standstill? And name of your primary school production... With plays on words in it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Aaron, who joins us on thirteen ten sixty. Aaron, how are you going? Good, thanks, boys. How are you? Are you feeling the pressure a little bit at story number 12? Yeah, I've got butterflies. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how much of the show you've been able to listen to, Aaron, but um, you've heard the quality of stories, haven't you? Excellent. Yeah. Five, five, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay, I mean, Aaron, there was two themes after last one. There was what was the name of the primary school production that you were in? Was it one of the themes? Was it a pun, play on words, or... Did your gig get brought to a standstill because our last caller just talked of Dressed as a Cow. Called Mozart. Mozart ended up in the orchestra at her production. Aaron, what theme have you gone for? Uh, the, the play brought to a standstill. All Fantastic. Right, Aaron, let's officiate this with the uh, story number. Story, story number 12. 12. Take it away. Well, um, it was actually my little brother, hmm. and um, he gets really bad stage fright. And they're at, um, at a school gig, and he was playing the flute. And um, my mum tried to slowly and uh, quietly whisper, uh, Chad, your fly zone's undone. <laughs> and he looked down and um, he looked down and saw his fly was undone and just dropped his flute and ran off the stage crying. <laughs> <laughs> what? How old was he? Oh, he would have been 13. 13? 14. And it was yeah. enough to bring tears. <laughs> Complete standstill. Well, do you, now, did your mum think that she'd done the right thing still? Oh, well, you know, you know, she's just trying to help her, help her little son out. But um, 
It's a bit loud, I think. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. Okay, great story, Aaron. That's a good story. Two themes, Ham. What are you throwing around? <laughs> How do we, Could we do this for a theme? I mean, Aaron's caught up there and embarrassed his little brother. Mm-hmm. Would we? Could we just go? Would you like to embarrass your little brother <laughs> on radio? <laughs> or let's just do little. Would just you, like to embarrass the sibling. Would you like to embarrass your brother? May as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Throw it out there. I mean, is there something, is there a real, is there a ripper of a story that yeah. you'd like to embarrass your sibling with? Yeah, I like that a lot. And um, I suppose let's go with, do we want to go with mums? Is something with the crying? Would we go with re- regretful tears? Yeah. Where shouldn't you have cried? Where shouldn't you? Because okay. he's going to be looking back at that and going, I could have handled that, I could have played that <laughs> I cooler. I could have that better. All right. So the two themes are regretful tears. Yep. What, what is the stupidest thing you've cried over? Yep. Publicly. Oh, yeah. Okay. And would you like to embarrass yeah. your brother? Yeah. Because I, you know, I cried over those chips when I was a kid. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you cried because you didn't, you didn't finish. I got to finish my Red Rooster chips. <laughs> yeah. And you, I, and you, I was hysterical. <laughs> and you asked your dad to drive you back. Yeah, at, at five two. in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I regret that I could have played that cool because, you know, I'm still trying to win over my dad's affection because <laughs> he sees me as the kid that cried at five in the morning over the chips. <laughs> This is Hamish and Andy. That reminds me of a story. Oh. Hamish and Andy. What a huge journey. And you know what? I'm so glad that everyone's come along for the ride with mm. us. And you know how I'm glad I didn't come? Mm. The rules. The rules. Yeah. 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 For the whole show, we have just tried to monkey bar from one story to another, and that reminds me of a story. Here we are, Ando, probably only two stories away from finishing it. I reckon this would have to be the second last. This would have to be our second last story of the show, yeah. and we've had some real quality stories. Disney have called option five of them. We said already. no way. No way. Warner Brothers then called after them. We said, we said yeah, spoke. yeah. <laughs> Actually, you just had something against Disney. <laughs> uh, ben joins us. Ben, how are you today? Yes, good. Are you good. limbered up? Are the vocal cords ready? Yes, I've been humming and singing away. <laughs> Very good, Ben. <laughs> now you are, you're linking your story to Aaron's story. The two themes we picked what, were... Yeah, what shouldn't you have cried at? And would you like to embarrass your brother? Mm. Uh, that's a very broad theme. What have you gone for, Ben? Okay, I've gone for the, not the brother, but the brother-in-law. I'd like to embarrass, you embarrass your, your brother-in-law. brother-in-law. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah, so... Um, Weekly, actually, we should do how many stories we're up to, because I don't even know. Story 13. Story 13 we're up to. Take it away. All right, so I've got a bit of a, a juicy uh, little bit of gossip that no one's heard before. <laughs> Good band. So, um, the band Hanson. Yep. It's uh, probably not as popular as it used to be. But no, that's fair no, to say. Yeah, that it's very fair to say. say. Uh, the most popular song, Mbop, yep. I, would, I dare say. Yeah, so um, now the, I'm, I'm, I assume that all three were brothers. Yep, correct. Now, yeah. So my brother-in-law actually had a crush on the lead singer. Mm-hmm. And he didn't know it was a uh, boy, it was a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Thought that, uh, was that, was Zach the, the lead or Taylor? I, I think it was Taylor. Was it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but Taylor That's Hans- not, I've heard of people mistaking Taylor Hanson for a girl. So your brother-in-law, who's married to your sister, mm-hmm. once had posters of Taylor Hanson, a boy, idolised them, yep. thought, thought about them romantically, not yep. knowing it was a boy. That's correct. Ben, what's his full name? It is Brendan Park. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent Terrific. work, Ben. Terrific. How old was he when he had a crush on Taylor oh, Hanson? Oh, well, I don't know. He must have been a teenager. He was, had a crush on him for like five years. Five yeah, like, years? You haven't worked it out within five years. <laughs> that is it's, a worry. I think he's just gone, I'm going to do no, I'm going to do no research <laughs> on, that, on that chick. <laughs> I'm just going to love her from afar. <laughs> Unlucky that, uh, that he slash she had the name Taylor yeah, as well. Exactly. Thank you very much, Ben. All right, boys. Have let, a good let, I reckon we've got it. I mean, after this will be our final story. Yeah. So we have to pick the themes wisely here. We hey? do. We now pick two themes, mm. and from those two themes, you'll be able to call 131060 mm. and give us the final story. Mm. And that reminds me of a story. We'll first, have come a long way. First thing for me. Yeah. Have you been disappointed in your brother-in-law? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you disappointed? Or are you disappointed with the person that your sister married yep. or, you know, that your daughter married? Well, I think, no, I think we can keep it at brother-in-law. Brother-in-law? Keep okay. it at brother-in-law okay. because you're going to your sister, don't bring him into the family. <laughs> <laughs> Regret that you've done that. Yeah, exactly. Did you want a better one? Did you want a better what, brother-in-law? Because I'm excited when my sister gets married because yeah. you've got another brother. 
I yeah. nothing against my current brother. He's terrific. Yeah. We're both excited. Great. We'll get another brother. But if he brings in a dud. She brings in a dud. We're going to get so. <laughs> you're our one chance for a new brother. Did second Second one. Yeah. Did you love Hanson? Do we go man, Hanson, love? Man, Hanson, love. How far did you go as a dude loving Hanson? <laughs> <laughs> for people who haven't heard every story, we will quickly recap right now. Story number one, Ando. I kicked it off. Grandma rewinding DVDs. Story number two. It can made you think, Ham, of a story where you worked at a video shop and your co-worker suspiciously, suspiciously always cleaned films in the adult section. Story number three. Brooke used to also sneak adult films at a friend's house but watched them from outside the house so she could run away. Story number four. Bert staged a crime scene to hide all the lawn bowls incident from his parents' eyes. Stand alive. Story number five. Rod threw pens at a bum into a bum crack from four metres away. Radio trick. Story number six. <laughs> Emma, husband got tattooed uh, uh, of a smiley face above her bottom. Radio Heaven, story number seven. Jody uh, called in, adult called Tony, who uh, got kept his baby teeth yeah. and played with them. That was weird. Uh, <laughs> rules aren't great, story number eight. Terry rang in, he had a weird Tony as well, six foot and 60 kilograms. Uh, weird Tonys are fine, story number nine. Ellie, uh, don't trust men, she doesn't trust men with long ponytails after a fun run she did. Yeah, never again. Story number 10. Craig ran in. He had a no fun run as well because his mate ran off with his wife at the end of it. Already used the rhyme for seven. Story number 11. This is Ruth. <laughs> Dressed as a cow, she fell into an orchestra. Ooh, that would have, you would have yelled. Story number 12. <laughs> Aaron. Brother cried as he dropped his flute after noticing his fly was undone at a school recital. What a journey it's been. Story number 13. Ben Ham, his brother-in-law had a crush on the lead singer of Taylor Hanson, not knowing that he wasn't a girl. In fact, Taylor Hanson was a boy. And now... This, this is, is the, the final, final story. story. The two themes from the Taylor Hansen crush debacle were Do you love Hansen as a man and are you proud or are you disappointed with your brother-in-law? Our final story will come from Claire. How are you going, Claire? Good, how are you? Very, Very good, good and thank you for being the final story in today's show, which has been That Reminds Me of a Story. <laughs> My pleasure. Claire, are you nervous? I'm very, very nervous. It's a big, big thing being the last story. It is. It's a huge honour, isn't it? Now, what theme have you decided to go for? Disappointed in my brother-in-law. Okay. Well, soon to be brother-in-law because he's my ex-boyfriend. Really? Well, this is pretty exciting. We want to get the whole story. We have to officially mark it. <laughs> story 14. Talk us through it. Okay, well, many, many years ago, before um, my sister started going out with this guy, uh, we were at a party, we met up, we hooked up, and we were kind of going out for a little while, not very long, and then, you know, we broke up a couple of years later. He's now engaged to my sister, and ha- they have two children. Oh, man, what a <laughs> was it a uh, was it a Was it an awkward breakup between you two? No, no, kind of mutual. It only lasted, like... Days kind of thing. We were only teenagers at the time, and yeah, and um, you prefer like, him not to be there, Claire. Oh, uh, it's yeah, kind of. We belong on the Jerry Springer show, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good story to finish with, Claire. Yeah, you've done it. <laughs> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> Thank you, Claire, for being a part of it. Thank you, everybody, for being a part of that. Reminds me of a story today, Ham. We started with a story about your friend's grandma rewinding DVDs. We ended up with Claire having her ex-boyfriend as her brother-in-law. Quite extraordinary. Ham. Twelve degrees of separation. That's how we got there. Were Fourteen stories. <laughs> 